So welcome to this video. What I have here is what I th consider to be the A-list of headlamps or head torches as, as we call them in the UK. So wait to the end of this video to find out which are the keeper or keepers. So what do we have here? We've got the Petzl Swift RL. We've got the Phoenix HM65RT. We've got the Silver Trail Speed 4XT and the LED Lenser H15R Core. Now these are all crazy powerful. So in the video, just for a bit of balance, I've also got the teeny little Nightcore NU25. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do trail shots, just moving along what it would be like in the dark. We're gonna do some distance work to see if these headlamps will actually shine to their featured rating, because what you, what you want really is power in reach from these. And then we're gonna see how versatile they are by doing some little uh, low light tasks around the, around the tent, because there's no point in having a, a super powerful headlamp when all it'll do is shine a long way. So for closed task, you're completely dazzled. That wouldn't be versatile at, at all. And then finally, we're gonna go to a desktop review at the end and doing a little bit of a summary up to see which is my keeper. So I've recruited for this video tonight my friend Jason and he's called Jason Friend and Jason actually is a professional photographer and uh, Jason's got a YouTube channel called Jason Friend Photography so there'll be a link below and in the corner of the screen now so check it out it's all about landscape photography and anybody doing outdoor videos photographs you're bound to pick up loads of fantastic tips so thanks very much for coming along tonight Jason and I didn't have the equipment to do this low light stuff so I'm your I'm sure your pro stuff will be fantastic. Not a problem, no problem. Brilliant. Petzl Swift RL on reactive low medium high this is the Petzl Swift RL on low Continuous beam, medium, high, this is the Phoenix on flood, low, flood, medium, Flood high, spot low, spot medium, spot high. And then both together. There we go. A combination of both, but I'm sure you'll agree the flood tends to kind of over, the spot overflows the, the flood. <laughs> the flood overflows the flood. <laughs> okay, here's the Silver Trail 4XT. I've got to do it in reverse order because it starts off on high. Medium. And low. This is the lead lenser, but it's, since it's got a continuous dial, it's quite hard. So I'll start off with low, around medium, and then high. And it just flashes there to show you it's on the highest possible. And using the zoom now on high, I can show you that focused beam. And that's turbo. turbo spot you should see it go down after 10 seconds and there we go dimming back down to 1000 lumens nightcore NU25 on low 
medium, and there's high. Now if I press and hold it, we should get a turbo as well. It's pretty good. For the general trail walking section, I don't think there was any clear winner. They were all absolutely fantastic. You know, for that medium distance where you might be walking or even running, you could pick out the trail immediately ahead of you. They're all good for that. One of the main reasons you might want such a powerful headlamp is for night navigation. So you might want to see a feature in the distance. So we've picked out here a gap between the trees. There's some pale grass and some darker trees. And it might be just the sort of feature where, that you might be looking for, an entrance to another part. So what we're gonna do is go back 100 meters to see if these headlamps on full beam will pick out these features. So I'm gonna pace out 100 meters. They're all rated for at least 150 meters, except for the little night core. So at 100 meters, this should easily pick out this pale grass. Let's go. One, two, three. Petzl Swift on the target. Can we navigate? Phoenix HM65R on the target. Silver trail speed on the target. Lead lenser on zoom mode. Turn up to full. And there's on turbo. Really lighting that up there. Should we try with the night core? May as well, be rude to leave it. Not happening, is it? So for the distance shot, picking out this gap in the trees behind me, I think we could see that the LED Lenser H15 core was the clear winner. So if power and distance is what you're about, then that could be the one to go for. But I thought the Phoenix and the Silver were pretty evenly matched. I would probably give it to the Phoenix, but you make your own mind up uh, ab about that. And the Swift as well, that was a little bit disappointing actually, not quite hitting that 100 meters very clearly. I think it, uh, it would struggle getting to 150 meters. So, on to the next bit. Now, which one of these headlamps is the most useful for general tasks around camp, such as putting a tent up. I'll do them more in order you can make your own mind up. Starting off with the Petzl Swift on medium power. Just pitching here the Sidvang Scaring 2P, which I haven't got to use anywhere near enough recently. And the Petzl's going to come into its own with this kind of task because with the reactive lens, you're looking far away, you get a little bit more light coming close and you don't get dazzled. To the Phoenix. So I've got this on the flood medium power. I've got a nice, lovely, warm, illuminated light here. in the foot properly and if I change that over onto spot a little bit of glare here for close tasks so I think for me using that on perhaps the full power on flood is really really comfortable yeah that's perfect so now onto the silver trail speed 4 XT this is on medium power and if I dip it down there, I get a nice kind of like flood effect. That's on low power. It's a powerful headlamp this, even on low. You still get plenty of spread. It's a nice light quality. I like, I enjoy using it. Okay. 
Now onto the LED Lenser H15R core. So you can't get medium power because it's a, a continuous zoom. But if I turn that down to somewhere like mid, and remember I've got the spot and the flood here. Forget about that on flood. That's quite usable. And with all these head torches, something I haven't mentioned is uh, you've got a full range of adjustment to, uh, to dip them down. Oh, ground's hard there. Oh, shouldn't do that with your foot, should you? Whee. So that's absolutely fine. So this is the night core, our little leveler. That's on medium power. A little bit dim, actually. So I probably would want it on full power for doing these kind of general tasks on a dark night. And then just to see what that wee flood's like in this environment. There we go. I think for me, seeing around, feels a bit underpowered really. Great. So for close-up shots and detailed work in the, in the tent, the, the pet is going to be great because it's never going to uh, really, really dazzle you. It's just great for that. This reactive comes into its own on that. But can the others turn down nice and low as well? So let's have a look at the... Yeah, so here is the Phoenix on low. And the thing I like about the Phoenix is you can just go straight off from there just by press and hold. So imagine if you're in the tent, getting up in the dark, you didn't want to disturb somebody else, you could keep that on really low and just uh, do your business without dazzling anybody. And then when you're on flood there, you can get the, the tent nicely illuminated. Now with the silver trail speed, it's straight onto full power straight away. But even when it's on low, there's still quite a lot of light. I'm kind of like quite dazzled by that. So. If, for low light tasks, the silver isn't great. And then finally, onto the, onto the LED lenser. So I'll just get that on, turn it down. And that's a nice kind of like low light there. Not too bright at all. I could certainly do kind of uh, the low level light tasks around the tent and stay fairly stealthy and then have it turned up onto flood. And then finally with a little night core, this is going to be great for low light, light tasks. And conversely with its the, the flood uh, feature there, going to be very good for that. Now something worth mentioning with all of these, if you want to clip them anywhere, what's their usefulness? So can you use these? Uh, you can of course use them on, the, on your head, but is there a way of attaching them onto there? So good adjustment with, this, with the Petzl, but I can't uh, actually clip it on very well independently. I guess I could tie it, not ideal. With the Phoenix, it's pretty heavy on a line like this, but with this little kind of protection clip there, I can actually hang it off a line like that quite nicely. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that with the uh, with the silver. No way of clipping it on. And to be honest, the lead lens is so heavy, that's not going to happen. And there's no little clasp there. And I guess the champion for that, because it's so light, would be uh, the night core. I can just clip on there and uh, dangle away quite merrily. <laughs> Fell off. I think the winner for that really has to be the, uh, the Phoenix because with this little protection part here that actually clips on there really really nicely. So stick around now for the tabletop review and the summary. Have you guessed yet which one's my favourite? Which one's the keeper? Okay welcome back. Here's all the head torches sat together and the night core sitting as a little outlier there. And these are the respective boxes. I'm going to very quickly show you the boxes, what's in them and what kind of charging cable they use. And in this section, I'm using this little crib sheet here. If you want to uh, pause that, this is a summary 
of all of the main features to compare them. And at the end of this section, I am going to give you a final summary on comfort, versatility, and which one of these head torches is the keeper for me, or oh, multiple head torches in fact. Starting off with the petzl, there's an outer sleeve here, used to be rechargeable. The charging cable that you get is the old micro USB style, uh -uh, thumbs down petzl. And in the box there's just some simple instructions, a little bit of moulding. So the light is listed to be 900 lumens max. Petzl say that it weighs 100 grams. Down to my scale, let's just let that zero. 102 grams, so pretty much spot on really. Now, the maximum distance is 150 meters. The price is pretty pricey at 75 pounds. Major features that it has is, is this reactive feature. So what that means is that for close proximity objects, it'll reduce the power output into 900 loop. And it's hard to get an accurate power and life uh, accuracy out of this because with the reactive lighting, it's always kind of uh, constantly changing unless you put it on the constant features. So. The best I can get is 200 lumens for five hours, and 200 lumens is a, a usable amount of five minutes. Is uh, five hours is quite a long time. The body is made of uh, plastic. It's got a lock feature on it, so that there, when you slide it across, is actually locked, and that is unlocked. Each time you switch it on, you get a power function or just a quick press there and you can see that. Now positive features uh, about this is it's waterproof to IPX4 so any rain it's going to it's going to handle and something I don't like is it's got a dedicated battery so this unit on the back here is actually the battery and you can clip that on and off uh, but they're about 40 pounds for a new battery pretty expensive really. So the actual super positive things about this head torch are the fact that uh, for the size you get a lot of power. Uh, really really great. And this is actually the, the sensor for the reactive lighting. So if I just open and cover that, that's not changing. I think there's just too much ambient lighting. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of range of power and nowadays the reactive lighting works very, very quickly. I had an older Petzl reactive one and that was very slow to change, but this one's kind of like pretty much instant really. So something I don't like about this head torch is this switch itself. If you are using this on, a, on your head, <laughs> as you typically would do, it's very hard to actually move it from one to the other. In fact, even just kind of uh, holding it in my hand like this is pretty much of a struggle because it's very stiff. So if that's on your head with no resistance, you can't actually push it across uh, at all. You've got to kind of like push it down and slide it across. It's really, 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 really hard work and it feels very vague and, and cheap. I can do it there when I'm really braced, but it's so stiff, which is probably a good thing, uh, if it's just on your head. Let me show you. So that's on my head now, that's unlocked. So I can unlock, I can lock it there now and then, but unlock it, it's very, very hard, to, very, very hard to feel. And you have to put so much pressure on it, it's kind of hard to tell when you've locked it or unlocked it. So yeah, that's, uh, unlocked now. I'll slide it back to locked, that's definitely locked, and then trying to get back that across, it's really indistinct. And then trying to lock it back again, you know, you've got to get your fingernails in it and a lot of pressure. So doubtless they've thought about it that, you know, you need a good bit of resistance, but I think that's also a negative thing with this with this head torch. Comfort-wise, it's excellent. When I've ran in this, it doesn't move at all. It fits on my head very nicely, and the headband comes behind here, so kind of like really, really comfortable. Good. Plugged into an external power supply. 
that's in there now, indicates it's charging, my power bank is fully charged. And the answer is no, it won't switch on there. So you haven't got that versatility of using an external power bank. As soon as I pull that out, it'll switch on. Now, the other slightly th uh, negative thing about this head torch is when you switch on, it goes on to the kind of uh, whatever appropriate uh, mode it would be for the reactive, and then you can cycle through higher powers, but to get back to off, you've got to cycle through the high, higher powers. So the opportunity to be stealthy isn't that great. I would give this head torch four out of five. It's absolutely fabulous, great power for its size, looks great, but I think it's let down by the dedicated external battery, the difficulty with this uh, on and off slash lock switch, lock switch, and the fact that you have to cycle through high power uh, to switch it off. So. Yeah, there's no way of doing that otherwise, I've, I've, I've tried. So, four out of five overall for the Petzl Swift. Moving swiftly on from the Swift to the Phoenix HM65RT. Compact box, features on the back here. Manual. Spare O-ring there. So, the weight that Phoenix quote without the battery is 90 grams. Unrealistic, of course, you've got to have the battery in. So that's 143 grams. The lumens go from uh, 1500, but I think that's unrealistic because 1500 has that power rating for the spot and the, the flood. Whereas really in practical life, you're only going to use one or the other. I find that the very powerful uh, spot overpowers the uh, flood, so you wouldn't tend to use them together. So 1300 uh, max is typical. They quote 170 meter distance and the price, the price varies enormously. I've seen £55 online through to, through to 100 so you can expect to pay typically £75 to, to £80. On 400 lumens, it'll last for 12 hours. Remember that the silver was 200 lumens for five hours. The body is made out of a nice, strong magnesium alloy. And there is a lock feature, so the lock feature is a fairly simple sort of shield here so you can't actually press the buttons on or alternatively you can double press them and it gives like a little flash indicator there and now uh, it'll come on very briefly just flash there but you can access the blue LED uh, battery function there and to take the lock off you just press and hold there there we go we're back in business oh didn't press it for long enough there we go we're back on now so normally one comes on uh, it's waterproof to two meters we've got a lock feature and the batteries are a single 21700. These are very readily available, though I did have a spare one uh, from uh, another torch and it didn't actually fit. So they've got to be exactly right, the right length and these do vary. So I bought the actual proper Phoenix one that was, that was 20 pounds and I thought that was kind of uh, pretty reasonable really. That came in this little plastic box and that's why what I tend to keep it in, fumble, fumble, just goes in there, keeps it nice and nice and secure. So will this head torch work with an external power source? So here's the battery bank there. Let's plug it in by USB-C. 
So that's showing. And I know what the answer to this is already, is yes, it'll work. All the features work uh, with an external power source. So you can potentially have that in your pocket and uh, you could, if you had enough power, you could run this torch indefinitely. So what are the features I really like about this? Well, the head torch adjustment is this innovative bower feature. So you just click that down and wind it in. It doesn't always sit perfectly behind that, but I haven't found it uncomfortable in use. I'm a little bit worried about the, the durability of this, uh, but you know I've never heard of any particular issues. It's sublimely comfortable and is light enough at 150 grams not to be particularly in, intrusive. I think it's an absolute fabulous all-round head torch and I haven't really got any negatives about it. If you want to be uh, stealthy you just press and hold and that switches it off so if you're on uh, a quite a low power you can just turn it straight off from low power. Okay it hasn't got a red light on it and that might be important to, to some people but on the head it works really really well. So little negative features for me on the Phoenix HM65RT. And I best we get a finish off with what that's like on my noddle. No bouncing there. My chops are probably bouncing though. <laughs> so overall, what I would I give the Phoenix HM65RT? Five out of five. So let's move on to the big boys. He's the silver trail speed 4XT, 1202 true lumens. A little bit of a side note about the power rating with any of these uh, torches. Now, this is at first switch on. The pencil tends to have very little power reduction over time. The Phoenix does have a barely noticeable power reduction but you can switch it off and switch it straight back onto kind of full power, which goes against this kind of uh, circuit protection thing, but that's what Phoenix have made to work. Now, with the silver, there is a very marked uh, drift off over time and it has to cool properly before you can get it back on again. So it's worth doing your own uh, research about power drift off. So don't always be fooled by this kind of high power. Now this is designed as a versatile torch and it also comes with, if I can get in there, a few extra bits and bobs. There's a bag to keep it in. There is a helmet mount there. There's a long cable that uh, enables you to mount the battery on the back of a, a helmet and there's that uh, specific clip there and there's also a handlebar mount so of course it's designed to be worn as a head torch and we can see these things here as a head torch to mount on the handlebars of a bike and to mount on a, a helmet Charging is by micro USB. Boo. Now, let's have a little look at the weight. So, silver, say, 257 grams. Start to get pretty damn heavy here. And on my scales there, that's 266 grams. That's 120 grams heavier than the Phoenix. Lumens or 1200 uh, lumens and uh, something I particularly like about this light is the, is the color temperature of those lumens are really really good it's uh, 160 meters rated and the price is a hefty 160 pounds I didn't pay that I got that for much less but uh, pretty expensive now it's uh, got this silver intelligent light feature and what that means is that when you tilt it up, the spot uh, feature comes into mind. And when you tilt it down, 
it becomes more of a more of a flood although as you can see here spot and a flood it's a combination and then when I go on to tilt up we should be able to see yeah the spot there has become much brighter and in practice this is quite subtle but uh, evident it's a little bit irritatingly slow to change but if you imagine that you were uh, biking and didn't want to dazzle traffic it would be really really useful it's got plenty of power for time, 600 lumens for 7.5 hours, although I have seen on some online forums that the uh, power it lasts for is considerably less than that. It hasn't got any sort of lock feature, although if you put it in a bag, you can just disconnect the cable pretty easily. If you're doing that on your head, it's very, very difficult to do that back up on your head. You've got to do it uh, separately. It's got a battery indicator, which is kind of like always a bit of a fumble. I can never find about where that, where that is. There's a kind of like a button hidden somewhere. And uh, you know, if you're not using it, if you're not super slick with it, where the hell is it? Okay, I'm gonna have to take this out. There it is, hidden away just in there. And there's the power rating on the side there. So it is visible, but again, I haven't used it for a couple of weeks. It's just tucked away in there. That that status gives you a nice kind of indicator there. So it's uh, it's splash proof, rain proof, not a, a super uh, dedicated uh, battery battery life. So charging, as I say, is by micro USB that's in here. So let's see if this will work with an external power bank. Just plug that in there. Always put these the wrong way around. So that power bank is working there. And yes, that works with all features. Now, if you don't want the silver intelligent light feature, what you can do is press and hold and it'll work on a spot and flood combo rather than the dipped beam, if you like. Let's just unplug that. This is the 3,500 milliamp hour battery that it comes with. I also sourced a spare 2000 lumen battery. These on their own cost 70 pounds, pretty expensive. I picked this up new or news off eBay. I think it was 25 pounds. I think normally these are running more like 50 pounds. So the head torch itself is uh, very expensive and the batteries are also really expensive. So what are the features that I really like about this light? So it's comfortable to wear. It's uh, not bad, even though it's a fairly heavy battery that's balanced at the back. The uh, light quality is particularly good ha in terms of color temperature. However, stealth mode, forget it. Uh, as soon as you switch it on, it goes straight onto full power. And I find myself in use in this shielding. Uh, you're gonna completely dazzle all your companions by giving them a full face blast of 1200 lumens straight away, although that does drift off kind of fairly quickly. Now, the big no-no for me, why I'm not using this torch for wild camping, is this gets really, really hot. It's a fairly small head, and I'll try and show you the video now, uh, but I actually burnt a hole through the bottom of my uh, ground sheet in my tent and it went through the the floor underneath i think what i'd done as i'd been out just placed it down burnt right through straight away absolute nightmare so i think it would be a great biking light great for kind of like outside walking but would you trust putting that in your pocket and burning a hole in your 250 pound cortex jacket i don't think so so overall, for me, I would give this a two, or if I was being generous, a three out of 10. So for the price and everything all around, I think two out of 10, really. Sorry about that, Silver. You look great, but that heat, 
that burns holes and stuff, heavy expensive batteries, drift off of the light, not amazing. I do use it and I use it on the bike, but not for while camping and hiking, definitely not. Now onto the real jug juggernaut, the LED Lenser or LED Lenser H15R Core. On night exercise navigation the other week, I was with a young lady who had the H19, and wow, that thing really, really lit up the hillside. And uh, slightly different design uh, than this, but really, really big and heavy. So here's the box, front, back, pretty pictures on the side, explaining the features. What is in the box? manual and its own particular magnetic charger and that just goes on there like that and you could argue that it increases the waterproofing but pretty probably easy to lose this cable eh? You've got to keep that real safe the weight Let's have a little look. Lead lenser, quote, 360 grams. On my scales there, 389 grams. And you really do feel the weight of this thing. Uh, it's all in the battery. It's mega beefy. We've got 2,500 lumens. And the major feature of this is that uh, you can, and that is quoted as going from 20 through to a thousand lumens, and then if you want to be on boost mode, you double press that, and that gives you 2,500 lumens, but importantly, only for 10 seconds. So we'll perhaps see that, there we go, that's dimmed down to uh, 1000 lumens now. So realistically, you could call this max 1000 lumens and you can get a little bit of a boost. Uh, it's got a zoom feature there, so you can uh, turn that in and out to get uh, a zoom. The light quality isn't great, and you can probably see it there. It's kind of like nice in the core. If you're a bit fussy like me, there's, uh, color bleed out there especially in zoom there you can see like a greenish tinge as it zooms out but i guess that's a sacrifice that you've got to make to have have that have that feature which is pretty good it's got it's got great reach to it led lenser are saying that you'll get five hours when you're on a, a thousand lumens the body is made mostly of plastic. It's IPX67 waterproof, which is all the kind of like splashes. The battery isn't very versatile. It's a 21700, like the Phoenix HM65 RT, RT but uh, it's like a double thing welded together. So it's a dedicated thing from LED lenser, and they are £36. So there is a lock feature and you just press and hold and that locks it. Now, hello, let's talk about comfort. For me, not. Now, I find it, if I wear it in kind of like sling back method there, it's okay. But have, have I got a pointy, pointy head? Yeah, comments below, please. I've got a pointy head. If you've got a kind of a, a head that's totally molded to the shape of the technician that uh, this was originally made for, you'll be absolutely fine. But these kind of like bits of plastic here are not very comfortable at all. Uh, I would put a piece of felt or neoprene across there and that would improve comfort considerably. The weight though at 389 grams, you do really feel that okay for short use. There's no way you're gonna run in it. Uh, if you were walking with it for kind of like hours, you probably would start to feel it unless you've got kind of like a bit of a, a neck like the rock. So what else can we say about it? So overall, what are we going to give the LED Lenser 
H15 core. It's got great power, nicely designed, well built. If you're not prepared to worry about the weight, it's fine. But overall, for hiking and backpacking, which is really what we're talking about, three out of 10. It's got other great features, lots of power, but on reflection, the H7R core is a better light. Tom Heaney, a YouTuber, has got a great video on the H7 and 15 as a comparison, and he prefers the 7 as a uh, an all-rounder. Something I forgot to do was the will it run on an external power supply? Now. This would perhaps be difficult to keep in situ for an external power supply. And that's showing charge in there. So will it switch on? Well, that's in lock mode now. So I was just trying to switch it on. I'll unlock it. So that's shown as unlocked now, and it won't switch on. So it'll charge from an external power source, but you can't actually power it on when using an external power source. So I'll unplug that, and there we go, it's on now. So lastly, let's look at the, the little baby, the Nightcore NU25. Uh, the manufacturers say 28 grams. Whoa, 54. I don't know where they get that from. Maximum lumens are 360, so it's enough power for most general tasks. The distance is 81 meters, and the price is around 35 pounds. So we've got a uh, main there, and press and hold for turbo, and you can just cycle through the different modes there. I should go on to red. Oh, there we go. And that has two powers for red. And then goes on to flashing. If you press and hold that, that's where you get the uh, flood one. So fantastically versatile. They say that 360 lumens, it'll go for 35 minutes. So if you want some beef, not very long. So 190 lumens, which would be a usable mid power, five hours all plastic body, rated at IP66, so rain is absolutely fine. You can't change the battery. It's uh, a dedicated sealed battery. So over its lifetime, it's gonna kind of degrade, isn't it? So let's have a little look if we can run this off an external power supply. Just get this back again, just bear with me. And we're back to micro USB, unfortunately. Let's suddenly jump back 10 years. So will this work? It shows that it's charging there, a little red light. So will this work? Yes, it will. And it'll cycle through all the modes. So that'll work with a, an external power source. So comfort wise, absolutely superb. You don't know it's got, you've got it on your head. It, it's so light, it's absolutely incredible. You can't even believe that there's a, there's a battery in there. And remember, this is kind of like half the weight of the already light feeling petal and a third of the weight of the uh, Phoenix there. And what's 50 as a percentage of 360 like? nothing so fantastically versatile and i know we're not comparing uh, apples with apples here but i just put this in because i wanted to like a bit of a reality check here do you really need these massive headlamps i think you do there's an absolute place for them but something lightweight like this is kind of like really really useful if you were comparing it against other lightweight ones i would give it four out of five Let's let's wrap up. What am I keeping here? Right, well, 
I've already sold this to a friend. He likes it. The Petzl I've owned before and I sent it back. I bought this one specially for the review. And this is also going back because of the switch issue. The silver I own and I just keep it for kind of like dog walking sometimes and on the bike, it's great for that. So the keeper, the keeper for me is the, you've already guessed it, the Phoenix HM65R-T. Absolutely fantastic headlight. So this is also a keeper, but this lives all the time in my first aid kit. So I'm, if I've got a nighttime emergency, I know that I've got a backup torch. It's always in there. So that will come with me on every hike. Uh, even if I, it's summertime and no, I'm not going to be benighted. I know I've always got that. If there's any risk of reduced light, definitely always take that um, with its nice compact spare battery. In fact, my legs are aching just now. Uh, I was out up Scarfell Pike yesterday via Lord's Rake and the West Wall Traverse. Didn't video it. Uh, and we walked back the last kind of uh, 20 minutes in the dusk and this was there ready for use. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you've got your own favorite head torch, please put it in the comments below. This was my choice of A-list uh, head torches and I hope you agree with my choices and, and verdicts. But please put what your favorite head torch is in the, in the comments below and what you like about it. Do you feel that you've got a better all-rounder than this for night hiking and backpacking. I hope you enjoyed the, the tent and beam shots and don't forget to check out Jason Friend Photography, link below. I'd really appreciate if you like and subscribe, click the little bell icon and then you'll find out when there's more videos from me. Thanks very much. See ya.